Hello everyone. Welcome to the aftermath of our Futas fainting challenge. Special thanks to all my lovely patrons. You are keeping this channel going. Finding himself in a hospital again was definitely at the very end of Kenji's wish list. No, scratch that. It wasn't anywhere on the list. Or even near the list. It was just as unnerving as the first two times, and if this was his third time to charm, he definitely didn't intend to continue in the tradition. At least his vision returned shortly after he got hauled into the ambulance, though seeing Aune's worried face made him wish it didn't for a second. After all his attempts to get out of the challenge before something could happen, he managed to scare Aune for real again. This thing might actually be cursed. How is this even possible? He sighed and leaned back on the bed again. There wasn't much he could do about it now anyway, even if he wasn't absolutely exhausted from the numerous tests the doctors chased him to across the whole hospital. A warm hand immediately closed around his, tearing him out of his thoughts. He glanced up at Aona sitting next to him, the worried crease on his forehead even deeper than when they were in the ambulance car. Everything all right? Genji attempted a reassuring smile and gave Aune's hand a weak squeeze back. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just tired, I guess. I just want to close my eyes and sleep for the next week. That would be nice. Do you think I could convince the boss to give me vacation? Aune nodded without hesitation. He better shoot. You need to rest. His face softened despite the still present deep concern written in his eyes. But don't go to sleep yet. The doctor said you shouldn't sleep now. I know, but it's hard. What's taking them so long with the tests anyway? Shouldn't be that hard, right? I just got dizzy from tiredness or something like that. He was downplaying it a lot, he knew. It wasn't like anything he had felt before when he got lightheaded or dizzy and the loss of vision was perhaps even more terrifying. Judging by Aona's expression and the way he clutched his hands, he shared the sentiment. It's better to be safe than sorry. He looked away, tension almost seeping from his shoulders. When you said you can't see, it scared me. He fell silent abruptly, but Kenji didn't need to hear the words to know what he was thinking about. The flashbacks of his flight down the stairs entered his mind making him shiver. He avoided thinking about it too much the whole time, but now that Aone brought it up, it fully hit him just how close to falling down the stairs again he was. All it took was for Aone to hesitate after his call for a bit more, not rush to him because he would think it was just another prank, and he could break more bones, or crack his skull. The image made his blood run cold. He subconsciously clung to Aona's hand in search of comfort the touch was always able to give him. I was too. His voice came out much weaker than he intended. He knew there was nothing to be ashamed of. After all, he did almost pass out and suddenly lost vision for no apparent reason. But admitting fear meant worrying Aona. He didn't want that. No more than so far. And yet, once he started talking, he couldn't stop. I thought everything was fine and then suddenly everything went black. I could I could still hear everything and feel myself holding on the railing, but everything else was was so scary not to be able to see suddenly and I was scared you won't believe me. That you'd think I'm going to challenge after all and his throat tightened as he looked at Aune, his voice quivering slightly. I know you said I don't have to worry about it, but when it came to it, a heavy sight escaped from Aune's mouth. I'm sorry. Huh? Oh, no, no, don't apologize. It's not your fault that... It is. If I wasn't so nasty to you back then, you wouldn't be scared to ask for help. Kenji bit his lip, averting his gaze for a beat. You had reason to be. And... It's not really that I'm scared to ask for help. I just don't want you to be angry at me again. Same thing, and same result. 
He brought Kenji's hand to his lips, leaving a featherlight kiss on his fingers that chased heat into Kenji's cheeks. Please, don't hesitate to call for my help ever again. Please. Kenji froze, the plea in Aone's voice stunning him for a moment. And yet, despite it being a simple promise given how much he knew his fiancé cared for him, he found it difficult to say it out loud at first. Because things could easily change. And then, his nightmares would become his reality. I will. I promise. They both startled when the door to the room opened. The Dr. Kenji had a vague recollection of meeting before, nodded shortly at them in greetings, before handing Aona a piece of paper. Well, the results of your scans and blood tests came in, but I'm afraid I can't tell you what caused your issues. Like, at all? Unfortunately, no. There is nothing on your brain and your blood also doesn't show any anomalies. He gave Kenji a compassionate look. I'm sorry I couldn't bring a solid result. But taken from the brighter side, it also doesn't seem like there is anything wrong with you now. Are you sure? Yes. If something was out of ordinary, the test would show it by now. So, unless the situation will repeat, I don't think there is a reason to worry about your partner's health. Although I would recommend caution in the next few days. I understand you have a physically demanding job, which could cause problems this early on after potential collapse. It would be for the best if you rested and monitored your blood pressure and sleeping patterns. If anything seems wrong, don't hesitate to come here again. Kenji sighed, but seeing Aona's firm look in his direction, he nodded obediently. What else could he do anyway? He was sure Aona was about to guard him like a hawk again the moment they would leave the hospital. I will keep that in mind. Good. Well then, I don't have any more reason to keep you here. If your partner promises he's going to make sure you get home safely, I will let you off to rest in a familiar space. It's not like I didn't become a bit too familiar with this damn hospital. I will take care of him. The doctor nodded, apparently satisfied, and after handing Kenji a paper to sign, he left the room again. Not before reminding him to rest for the next few days, though. Well, that wasn't very helpful, was it? Aona pinched his cheek, making him squeak, before he got up and offered him his hand as support. It's still good news. Kenji couldn't possibly argue with that. No, boo, I can do this myself. You don't have to do everything. Unsurprisingly, Aona dismissed his words with a quiet huff and continued to tidy the bed while simultaneously piling up pillows and blankets on it. He hadn't let Kenji do anything since they arrived back home except for sitting down and drinking water, and while Kenji appreciated the care more than anything, he couldn't help but feel guilty as he watched his fiancé doing everything while he was only allowed to stand awkwardly aside and watch. Come on, don't be like this. I'm not immobile or anything, I can move around just fine. It's not like I'm going to collapse again from carrying pillows. You almost collapsed for no reason. Well, yeah, but I'm still pretty sure it was because I was tired. I'm feeling much better now. And besides, I know you'll catch me if I fall again. He tried for a teasing tone to lift the unnaturally heavy atmosphere that followed them from the hospital, but judging by the look Aona gave him, saying, Don't joke about this. Quite clearly, his attempt was unsuccessful. A strange tension wrapped around his heart, squeezing to the point of hurting. He clenched his hand around his other wrist, hanging his head in defeat. Aona maybe wasn't angry at him, but it sure felt like it in the end. You just have to mess everything up, don't you? Always. He flinched when the familiar large hands cupped his cheeks and made him look up again to meet Aona's gaze. He held his breath, but there was nothing other than tenderness and genuine concern in the hazel eyes he loved so much. Together with a silent question. I'm fine, really. Just thinking. It feels all wrong that you have to do everything again because of me. Aona furrowed his brow. Not because of you. For you. That doesn't change anything, though, does it? You are still stuck with taking care of me. 
All the time, ever since that stupid prank. I know you said you don't mind, but it just feels so unbalanced, I... The slightly chapped but still incredibly soft lips suddenly pressed against his own silenced him, turning the rest of his words into a pathetic little whimper. He instinctively leaned into the kiss, no less than melting under the gentle touch. His lower lip quivered when they parted. You can't keep doing this. I was serious. I am too. I don't like hearing you talk yourself down because of something out of your control. But I... Another kiss landed on his lips, effectively making him forget what he wanted to say. He looked away, grumbling under his breath. Are you just going to kiss me every time I'll try to say something you don't like? Aona shrugged, a small smile tugging in the corner of his mouth. If it helps. But it's not fair. You are using my weakness against me. You are making it easy. He became serious again, brushing his thumbs over Kenji's cheekbones. Why can't you sleep? Kenji froze. His mind got immediately flooded with the dream images he wished to never see again, his heart speeding up in his chest. He dreaded the question, dreaded the possible outcome, and even more, dreaded it all coming true. Why do you ask? Kenji, that's not something you should answer with a question. Sorry. On a side. A second later, Kenji found himself getting tucked forward and towards the bed. He instinctively settled on Aona's lap, light shivers running down his spine when Aona rubbed his arms around his waist to pull him closer. Do you want to talk about it? I... He stopped. His instinct almost screamed at him not to say anything, to play it off as regular nightmares with nothing more behind them. Because in the end, that's what they were. Nothing more than his fears personified even though he could swear he could feel his skin aching where the hands made contact with it even after he woke up, drenched in a cold sweat. But the much quieter voice of his heart was against that, advising him to tell Aune about everything he went through in his dreams. Because real Aune wasn't like the one in his nightmares. There was nothing to be scared of. He clutched Aune's t-shirt in his fists. No. Not. Not now. Please. Neither of them said anything for a long while after that. Kenji cringed inwardly, finding the only comfort in the fact that Aona still held him close, his embrace not loosening a bit. Then, Aona hummed softly, bringing their lips together one more time in a much more tender kiss than before. I'm here if you want to talk. Kenji let out a shattered breath and nodded, snuggling to Aona's chest. I know. Thank you. For everything. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any requests or ideas, feel free to write them under the pink comment. See you next time.